All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 351 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. If this is your first time here, welcome. Um, this episode, I'm going to try to get more straight to the point with this one because there's not much to talk about. I see a lot of people after, you know, you know, pretty much this entire week, including myself to an extent, just been grasping for straws just to find something to talk about. Um, I like to do every, you know, every now and then I like to talk to you guys, the fans, um good bad or indifferent i like to have time to actually talk to y'all because a lot of people like to talk at you guys but not to you guys and it, it's a disservice to a lot of us as uh content creators and i'm not like pointing anybody out or whatever the case may be this is a collective situation that we all do um and in some cases a lot of us can be pretty negative like you can't do this or you can't do that some people feel like they're gatekeepers or or whatever the case may be. But I want to let you guys know that it's okay to root for your team. And it's not just necessarily exclusive to the Atlanta Falcons. This is basically for anybody, for any team in any sport. Um, I want to go over that, and I want to give you the method of my thought process of all of that. Uh, if this is your first time here, like I said, welcome. You can find this on um, YouTube and Rumble if you want to listen to the audio side of things i am on anchor stitcher spotify apple and google Podcasts. go ahead and find your way over there and subscribe to any of those avenues just in case if one goes down you can listen to the podcast in other areas let's let, let's let's talk about this there are 31 teams outside of us you know there are 31 other teams 30 you know uh, you know other teams in the nfl could you imagine all of those other 31 teams not rooting for their team? And the reason why I say 31 is another reason why I say that, because one team is going to win the, the world championship. One team is going to win the Super Bowl. And that team is going to have the bragging rights for the entire offseason. And uh, does that make that, you know, the only team that teams could root for and have fun and be positive about? If that's the case, you know, the sports world will be very, very – very bland could you imagine that the only team that can you know that you can have high hopes for is the los angeles rams and i already made a video about the los angeles Rams and the way they won their super bowl um i did an episode about that which i think i, I still my gut feeling is feel like it's a nefarious style of uh winning a, a world title but um we can revisit that again another day or you can just go back to that video uh could you also imagine like going to the NBA and only can root for the Bucks for the entire year? Cause that's the team that actually made it. I mean, the thing is what I'm getting at, or, or you just root for the Braves cause they're the only team that won a national title. I mean, a, a, a world championship or the Bulldogs because they won a national title. What what I'm getting at is good, bad, or indifferent. You root for the team that you like. Even if you feel like you may feel in your heart of hearts that this, your team could win X amount of games, and you really believe that it's okay to believe that. Um, I hear a lot of people feeling like the Falcons are going to win four games, five games, six games. I've yet to see anybody say more than seven. And 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 it, it, I get it. You that you're entitled to your opinion, but the ones who feel like, hey, if the team can do this, they can do more. I've seen people in the comment section say that they can possibly win eleven or twelve games, and. You can go certain places across the the social media, YouTube, you know, all the other social media platforms, and people will think you're crazy. Listen, like I said, I'm talking to you guys as fans. It's okay. It's okay if you feel that way. Because there's nothing wrong with feeling that way because you know nobody knows what's going to happen. People are used to being negative. People are used to being beat down, especially in this fan base because of everything that happened. I get it. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that um I, I I'm against I, you know I I'm against them saying it I'm not I get it but you know the people that are like that we don't go at you know we don't go after them and say oh you're you're crazy for thinking they can win six games what I like about the guys I mean the guys who listen here you guys are awesome the guys who listen on other platforms for the most part when I watch and I listen you know those guys are great too. 
And, and you know, you have a few that are kind of weird, some few that want to defect and, and root for other teams because a certain player went to another team or whatever. I mean, I mean, that's just that's just weird in itself. It's okay to root for a player, but to actually like say, oh, I'm going to be, you know what I'm saying? It's just weird, but nevertheless. We all do a pretty good job of understanding as fans what we can and can't do as a team. And I think that's the that's the main thing about being a fan. You know your limitations, but you also understand if things go your way, a six win t- a six win season could easily turn to a nine win season. You have to understand regardless of what people could say about the Falcons last year, oh they won they beat all the bad teams. The times that we were playing them, y'all didn't think they were bad. The times that we were playing them, y'all thought we should have lost every game, but we overachieved. And to be quite honest, a couple of breaks that go our way, or if it was a couple of things that that we executed properly, we could have easily won nine or ten games. And I, I want people to understand that. This is not a situation where, you know, everything is just lost out of the gate. Every team that has won Super Bowls, every team that that went far in the playoffs has gotten some form of a break. It's almost in every aspect of every, you know, sport. I think the only one that don't that don't have that aspect really is like college football. Because college football is so top heavy, you can run through a few teams easily. And look like you're the best team in 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 the nation, even with the playoff system where it is. But all the other sports, you look at when LeBron James won, you know the title with the Heat and and even with Cleveland. There were things that not, I'm not taking nothing away from them per se, or taking away from anybody who wins the title. But you've seen things that say, okay, that helped them out. Things just fall the way they fall. You know, a call here, a play there, a player misses a basket here. The ball bounces a certain way. You know, you look at what happened with uh, the Rams that just won the Super Bowl. I mean, did you see the last two minutes of that game? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I mean, things just happen a certain way. It's not all based on, oh, you have great talent. You should do this. You're going to have things go your way. I mean, that's just the way it is. So I, I'm just saying this in general. We just have to understand that you put the talent out there on the field, good, bad, and different veterans, rookies, in between, whatever. You put the best talent that you can obtain on the field and go and play ball. If you feel like this is a loser team and you feel like you don't want no parts of the team, like I said in another episode, why are you still here? Honestly. Why are you still like look, I I I will I'll be the first one to tell you. I love baseball. And and let me be honest with you. The Atlanta Braves wasn't always my first team. I was a huge fan of Mark McGuire, Jose Canseco, Ricky Henderson. I used to love the Oakland A's. But they got so bad, I got tired of rooting for them. I'm not I'm not this type of person that's necessarily 100% ride or die for a team. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think I'll ever stop being a Falcons fan, but I'm going to call them on their BS when something isn't right. The back end of the Mike Smith era, I didn't like it too much. Dan Quinn, I didn't like it too much. But I'm a root for him, but I'm not just going to be blindly hating, t- I mean, uh, bl- blindly liking a team. And if it gets to the point where I really don't like a team, then I have no problem cutting ties with them. But I don't think the Falcons, me personally, I don't think the Falcons have done anything to make me feel that way. And and I'm not even a Hawks fan. I'm a Bulls fan. And I don't think the Bulls have done anything to make me feel that way. Post-Michael Jordan, I mean, did you see the ugly seasons that we had since Jordan left? We're just now looking decent for the past few years now. I've been with, I've been I've been following the Falcons since the early nineties. And um ever since I've been following the Falcons, I've been up and down with them the ninety five season, the ninety eight season. They don't wanna you know, don't wanna wanna really talk about the 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 Michael Vick trade. 
don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm thankful for us having Michael Vick, but I did not want to lose Tim Dwight. I really didn't. I didn't want to lose Tim Dwight. I, you know, I, I honestly, I, I, I loved Tim Dwight was one of my favorite players. One of them. But, you know, all the ups and downs that we had, but there, there's nothing that was that bad to make me feel like I, I don't want to be on the team anymore. Yes, coaches make mistakes. Coaches are bad for the, can be bad for a team. Coaches could do some abysmal things and make a team look very incompetent, but that's not necessarily a whole indictment on the actual organization. You just have bad coaches sometimes. That's why Dan Quinn's not here anymore. But the organization that I don't I don't believe Arthur Smith is I mean Arthur Smith. I don't think Arthur Blank is actually doing anything to sabotage this organization. Yeah, there could be some things that was done improperly. Well, that's hindsight. Yeah, there could be things that just didn't work out. Yeah, that's not necessarily hindsight. We see things didn't work out. But at the same time, I don't see that there's a reason why I can't root for him anymore because things just don't play out the way you want it to. The end of Dan Reeves era, it just didn't work out properly. Do we need to talk about Bobby Petrino? Really? Jim Mora? Do we really need to talk about him? I thank Mike Smith for what he did, but the tail end of that was not the best. So, with that being said, look, man, we have to understand that I believe, I firmly believe, that Arthur Blank wants a championship in Atlanta. Where there was some slips up, slip ups and mishaps, yeah. You can call it whatever you want to call it based on the dogfighting situation. That set the team back a few years. You know, but there's no doubt with all the moves that have been made since, you know, really, you can even go back to 97, 98 where we were in the Super Bowl. Then we turned around and got Michael Vick. Had some successful seasons. Then we fell off with the dogfighting thing. Then Matt Ryan comes in and has phenomenal years with the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons have phenomenal years with Matt Ryan, Michael Turner, you know, Michael Jenkins, and and, and Roddy White and all those guys. Algeron Crumpler came in before that. But you you know what I mean. Tony Gonzalez. We, We had some success with talent talent has never really been the issue it's just we just have not been able to be uh been successful with the talent we have now fast forward through the dan quinn era where we actually went to another super bowl we know what happened there get rid of dan quinn and we turn around have arthur smith and you see what he's been doing for the first couple of years yeah you have losing seasons you know, the first season of Arthur Smith was was better than expected. But I, 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 to me, I'm getting to the point now, I don't see this team regressing in wins. I believe that they're going to match their win total or better from last year. I think this is going to be a situation where, and you know, I don't mind eating my words. I don't mind, you know, being wrong on a quote-unquote hot take. Because that's what everybody has now. And why everybody wants to be following footsteps of having hot takes and stuff. I don't know. It's it's weird. Nevertheless, I feel with the way this team is put together, I think that we can we can sneak at least seven wins. If the defense can hold some teams to 14, maybe 17 points, I'll even say 20. They're holding the 20, 21 points minimum. They go with teams of that. I think we can win 10 games. That doesn't mean that the team is, 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 is destined to win that many games. But if the defense shows up and do what they're supposed to do, I think it could happen. And I see a lot of people that's on board saying the same thing. 11, 12 wins. I, I've seen it. And things going to change. You may feel different down the road. You know, injuries happen. You never know who may get hurt. You never they know who get hurt. In on other teams. But at the end of the day, we also have to realize and understand that, hey, this team can do something. And it's okay to root for that. Don't let anybody discourage you to root to root or not, or not root for your team. Not, and like I said, I don't think anybody that normally listens here don't let that happen. But if this is your first time here, you probably wonder why what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. It's okay. Not only just the Falcons, but any other team you have. 
You're going to have people that want to be right because they watch too much of these television shows that want to debate people and they think they feel cool because they said the same thing that what they heard on TV. But you know your team. If you know your team, you know what they're capable of. You see if this person steps up, this would be different. If that person step up, that would be different. If this person does this, we can do this. Or if this person don't step up, we could be in trouble. We know what our team is capable of. And it's okay to have realistic expectations. And with a team in a a league that's known for putting up a bunch of points, if we hold a team to under three touchdowns, I think we could be very successful. Because if we're holding the elite teams under three touchdowns, what are we doing to the teams that are not so elite? Sometimes you got to really understand what's going on. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I, I, I just feel at the end of the day, I think we're going to have a pretty successful season. I think the team is going to be a little bit better than advertised. I think the only thing we really need to worry about is the offensive line, which I will talk about that before the end of the week. I will be talking about the offensive line. I'm going to study the offensive line. So look out for that episode, for that episode at the end of the week because I really want to talk about that. Because I think that's something that needs to be addressed. If you like this commentary, hit the like button. Share this uh, podcast. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, episode 351, man. We're moving right along. Let me know what you guys think. I can be found on all the avenues of po- podcast avenues. I also can be found on YouTube and Rumble. Uh, I want to get out of here, man. I got a big day for uh, Wednesday. Got a lot of work that I got to get done. So I'm not going to hold you guys up. It's going to be a little shorter than usual podcast, but hey, nothing really changes, man. It's okay to root for your team. It's okay to root for the Falcons. It's a lot of positivity going on around here. A lot of wide receivers coming in to try to catch some footballs. It's a lot of guys on defense are hungry and ready to play. So just keep that stuff in mind. We'll see what they do. And I will see you guys on Thursday. You guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.